looks like your credits went through just fine. Fantastic. Now, where was I? Hmm, right, right. You were asking about the Mercs. Noxolaris. Well, friend, you have come to the right man. Been their humble street pharmacist since just after they got together. Some of my best clients, by the way. But more importantly for you, they're the best there is at what they do. I mean, what a group. Leaders are bona fide Atlantean voyager. That's right, Atlantean. Then there's the spooky techno wizard cyborg genius. Finally, a mystic smithy giant. Twelve feet tall if he's an inch. Not to mention the mountain of a spirit bear he calls brother. Now, I can get word to him if you're looking to hire mister. No problem there. Just let old Blitz give you two tiny tips for your health. First, don't get on their bad side. Make sure you have payment ready to go, and don't try to pull any bullshit, or you're worse than dead. And second, don't piss off that fucking bear. Finally, finally, there you are. <laughs> the Nexus had just enough power to fuel one more try. The last step. The Megaverse knows my Atlantean people as heroes, but I, a shadow of chaos has taken root in me. They try to bind it. They try to bury it. But when I finally called out to it, to you, from across the void, you answered. I am ready. Welcome, traveler. To the Black Shore. Your shame reaches a mother's heart, even beyond the veil, little brother. My sister saw her mocked her as the darkness closed in. She giggled and synthesized honey sweet tones while leaning close to softly breathe her venom into my ear. And so, with judgment passed and tourniquets in place, my family commanded the automated surgical bots to neatly slice both arms and legs from my torso. The harsh lights overhead swam and dimmed before my eyes as flesh and bone were replaced with cold, unfeeling metal to cripple my connection to the arcane. No, my family lies far behind my path. And I follow a new teacher as she whispers from the darkness ahead. Her voice haunts me with promises of forbidden knowledge and wonders precious beyond compare. Each step brings me closer to my prize, closer to my revenge, closer to her. stars as keenly as your ancient ones do. It is almost here. E is almost home. And with him 
comes the end for our proud and noble Vana Country Month, along with the rest of the souls on this world. As his foul shadow falls upon us all, we alone stand for those who cannot. <sighs> so rise, son of Aku. Our ancestors smile upon us this night as they call us home. Come and let us earn our place amongst the stars above. We are back with our Prism of Ketterfall campaign featuring Akama, Ren, and Ymir. Um, they had just arrived at uh, the way station that is supposed to lead to uh, the Wandering Aristocrat in their travels deeper into the Bitter Creep uh, to investigate the mystery of the spreading toxic chill that is emanating from deep within the zone before them. Um, in their travels, they have been led towards this destination and assured that it will be a respite of sorts, allowing them to have access to facilities to craft, um, as well as uh, to shop, and hopefully to have just a touch of much needed R&R. Um, there's also supposed to be several um, uh, powerful uh, entities that live here and from what they've been told um, this is a uh, organization that seems to thrive um, peddling its wares throughout this region of the wasteland um, we are in the rifts setting of Palladium books and with that let's begin Okay, guys. So, as we start for the day, you guys had just arrived um, at the outskirts of uh, what you were told is supposed to be basically the gateway to the Wandering Aristocrat. Um, you had uh, disembarked from the uh, transport um, and let's remember that Geiger is accompanying you. Um, Geiger seems to almost always be just slightly out of view. You notice that um, that individual definitely does not like the spotlight being upon her from what you've gathered so far. Um, as you stand before this scene, uh, you guys see that it's probably, you know, just a few minutes walk to the base of the tower-like structure. Um, as you've entered this uh, almost pristine area, um, you remember that just moments ago you were standing in a hazy, gloomy fog uh, in a landscape that appeared to have nothing but mud and rock to offer um, with no vegetation or wildlife to speak of. Um, as though the area of, of chill and miasma had, had literally killed off 
everything in the vicinity. Um, you know that this phenomenon called the Bitter Creep is supposed to be expanding outward um, and that eventually it will threaten the monastery that you've just come from uh, to, uh, to the south. Um, you guys had been led here by a drone, an aerial drone, which is now flown into the tower-like structure and docked um, in a port that has now sealed itself back up. Um, as you look around, you notice that there is abundant plant and wildlife here, as well as several structures set up uh, throughout the area. Uh, one high up on the hilltops on the left um, and another on the right at the base of the tower. Um, it appears to you that that one at the base of the tower is probably where people are supposed to gain entry. It looks a little more, you know, accessible, obviously, um, and its proximity to the tower just kind of lends you to, to believe that's probably where you're supposed to go. Um, as you look around the rest of the base uh, of this tower and the kind of hilly, uh, you know, kind of mini mountain that it sits upon. Um, you don't notice any other interesting markings or structures. You're not seeing any kind of actual entrances along the ground level. Um, and there are no ports opened up anywhere along the surface of the tower itself. Now the tower, um, the only thing that looks especially odd about the tower, um, is a strange kind of, um, heat distortion type of of um kind of illusionary effect that's taking place along the different antennae uh sticking out of the upper perimeter um along these surfaces it just looks just looks a little bit distorted where you can see the image kind of fluctuating a bit and it stays within probably 10 feet of the pylons themselves. So it's a, an odd effect, but definitely not anything, you know, cosmic uh, in scale from, from your experience so far in this land. Um, it does look highly sophisticated and the metal uh, or ceramics from which the entire structure seems to be made look relatively uniform it doesn't so much look like a composite of lots of different mechanical components um or at least its outer surface seems to be relatively solidly built um and while there is what one could call um you know markings um it doesn't necessarily look like circuitry or anything that sophisticated um so Essentially, you guys aren't really able to tell if this is some kind of artifact or if it's a piece of science that is just of a kind of otherworldly design. Um, you are, of course, welcome to, you know, use any skills or anything that you'd like or abilities if you guys are interested. And at this point, I'm going to just kind of open it up and let you guys decide what you'd like to do next. Um, time is... Where were we? Um, early morning. I think we're looking at about 9.30. Okay, about 9.30 in the morning. Uh, what do we do? Does this uh, babbling rook exist like it does in the um, Correct. photo? Correct. Yes. Correct, it does. Okay. Uh, other than the person in perspective, everything is the same. Okay. I want to go ahead and take pictures and pull out my camera, take okay. some snapshots of the area. The area? Yeah, be... Do you want to oh, focus on anything in particular? Uh, First, the tower, and then maybe the mountain chain and okay. the uh, water line. Excellent. Um, we're going to say you're going to need about three minutes to snap some decent shots. Um, okay. Anyone else? I was just going to say uh, both Ymir and Wotek appreciate this vista. Not only, I mean, they already felt at home when they stepped off in the more bitter creep area because of the cold, but this area really hits them both as 
something special, a, a hidden pocket in this world untouched by the roving chaos uh, that surrounds it. Kind of reminds him of his home. So they both walk to the babbling rook and Ymir just tastes the water, bends down, tastes the water, uh, and appreciates the area for the beautiful vista that's before him. Excellent. Excellent. Um, as you do so, as you kind of kneel down and, and just kind of take just a moment to actually make a connection with nature again, um, you realize that this... Go ahead and roll a perception check for me. <laughs> okay. Starting off uh, hot and heavy today. I like it. <laughs> I like I like it. Let's see. There we go. Bingo. Open that up. Just not being slow. Desktop. <laughs> Profiles. After. Uh, Kilo, anything you're interested in Ren doing? Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm still in my vehicle at this point, right? Or have I gotten out? Correct. You're still in your vehicle. I, I would obviously get out. Um, I mean, I'm that's better. That's not great, but it's better. Uh, I would get out. Okay. Um, I would um, slightly keep an eye on to see what uh, our friend is doing, but also um, give a decent inspection of the tower and just try to look for our, um, uh, just uh, look at its construction. Is any of it familiar looking to me as far as anything I've seen before? And then, uh, if not, also try to understand the reasons, the form behind the function here. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me a perception check and then hit me with a mechanical engineering roll. Um, back to you, Ymir, you are, you are having trouble really dialing in what this odd sensation that you're picking up here is, but you feel like there's some kind of struggle between the natural environment and not just a singular, but multiple external, um, forces. And so you almost feel a... A, you feel as though the land seems to be crying out in anguish and yet it also seems to be being sustained by some kind of artificial means um, and beyond that you're, you're not really sure what you're picking up uh, okay to, to that I would <clears throat> I would like to use a skill from Wotex Tree, if that were possible. Feeling this sort of imbalance or disturbance, uh, but not really quite understanding what it is, uh, Ymir would turn to Wotex and ask for his counsel. So I would like to cast uh, Commune with Nature for Wotex. Okay. Um, as Wotex steps forward, kind of... Oh, you, I don't... I, I, you want me to cast it? Or is that... I'm sorry, you wanted to... You wanted Wotex to cast it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I can... I'm casting and I'm, I'm looking at his magic tree right now and I'm just asking, do you want me to click the cast? Button? Oh, sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, as... Um, you kind of signal for him to approach with a silent hand gesture and nod. He steps forward, understanding your intent instinctually. Um, he lowers his head and begins a slow kind of rhythmic grumble, um, that continues on for several seconds. As he does so, Ren, you... You observe the tower and try and decide... Uh, what exactly you're witnessing here. Um, it appears to be technology, but you're also picking up some other kind of, of um, application of energy. You're not sure what, though. Um, right away, at first glance, all you're able to tell is it doesn't appear to be 
any kind of traditional techno wizardry. Um, but you would say that there is some kind of other forces at work here besides technology. Um, do you want to go ahead and do a, did you do a mechanical engineer role? Uh, no, because I was wondering about the modifier. Um, I, was asking if one. I don't know if I need one or none. No, no modifier on this okay. one. All right, so you garner right away that this is alien tech. Definitely not anything human in origin. Um, beyond that, however, you you have no idea. It's of some species that you've never encountered before. Um, you would guess, however, that it does use electromagnetic radiation in in some kind of capacity although that's so broad it really doesn't narrow things down much you would have already kind of guessed as much from knowing that this is some kind of you know from what you've heard some kind of portal or or you know some kind of relocation device so um nothing especially surprising comes out of your investigation um so i don't understand its form or its function because of the form is alien, and I understand that, but I don't understand why it's shaped this way or what it does because of that. Is that what you're saying? Correct. You're you're okay, basically cool. just picking up that it obviously is some kind of like, you know, tech gotcha. relocation device. So, um, let's see. Okay, so as Wotech uh, finishes uh, uh, forming his spell, um, the magic magic radiates out of him with just a, a, a light kind of flare of golden illumination. Um, this kind of pulse of, of dull golden light kind of expands from him and several small motes uh, of the same colored energy kind of uh, wisp up into the air slowly bobbing and floating like, like ash on a hot wind. Um, as it does so, his eyes kind of uh, uh, flare with that same energy signature um, and as he does so Bear would you mind reading off that spell for me I'd like uh, to make yeah, sure uh, absolutely I'd like to make sure that I have every bit of you know what it includes down um uh... Commune with nature. Uh, there's no. Oh, oh, there might be. No, that that doesn't have a description with it. Okay, no worries at all. So, so as he, uh, as he, uh, empowers the spell, um, your entire group is able to feel a subtle kind of shift uh, come over the surrounding area. Um, it almost seems as though wildlife and uh, the natural environment is kind of bending its uh, attention towards you, and it's an eerie feeling that uh, is, is very foreign to you guys. Um, you're not you're not sure how to really take this at first and then as you look over at this mighty bear um that seems to be in almost uh, some kind of trance um you notice that in some strange way you guys can all tell that he's almost like a he's almost become like a tuning fork um that is perfectly matching some kind of resonance of this area now, as this is happening and you guys are looking over at him, um, Bear, you feel a sharp um, kind of mental impression uh, explode across to you from Wotek. Let me see. One second here. And this is what comes through. 
Uh, not to interrupt, but I have a uh, the description for uh, Commune with Nature if you wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. We're uh, it's it was under biomancy. The biomancer meditates and gets a general feeling for the surrounding ecosystem. The spell will tell the character if the ecosystem is unbalanced or damaged and why. A general sense of the source of the disturbance, such as drought, extensive uh, pollution, deforestation, fire, war, plague, etc. if that helped but absolutely okay yeah thank you very much bro i appreciate that um that's I what comes have through. my spells up when we play since i'm always looking at things so yeah 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 um as that comes through ymir um you see that he himself will take himself is already beginning to shake his head and break his concentration and is turning towards that lower facility and starting to groggily, like, kind of limp towards it, trying to pick up speed as he goes. Well, getting that uh, general uh, impression, that mental impression from Wotek, uh, Ymir follows uh, his brother's counsel and breaks off from his location and rejoins the group uh, to, to move forward uh, at a, a quicker pace than he was moving before. He was sort of just lumbering along with the group, but now there's some purpose in his step because Wotek doesn't just uh, say certain words like he did or use certain phrases like he did if it wasn't uh, serious. Okay, so as you start picking up speed, um, your companions, as they glance over at you, are able to see that you're starting to, starting to hurry up. Um, Ren... You said you got out to take a good look, or no? You just yeah, wanted to yeah, look I, I, okay. no, I got out, yeah. Um, you do see Ymir uh, off to the side, kind of down a little closer to the water, uh, turn and start picking up pace following uh, Wotek, who looks like he's kind of starting to, to make himself move quickly towards that kind of base camp building. Um, Does it look... Uh, is there path or road i know my my vehicle is decent at off-road but it's just uh, there is viable. off to the better. off to the right there's definitely a trail it's i mean it's more than enough for your vehicle to have a very easy time um and the ground is all solid and and uh you know no no real overgrowth on the trail at all so it's obviously kind will, of what everyone that comes through uses sure i will use my vehicle to get to a more uh permanent stopping spot and i will follow that if they're going that direction that's where i'll go Okay, as you get back in, um, you hear a slight kind of thunk up on the roof, um, and you realize that Geiger has also just let back up to a, some position that she's found a good uh, a, ho a good hold up there um, while still being, you know, exterior to the vehicle. Um, um, can wow. I... Oh, go ahead. I was, I was just gonna say, could I uh, uh, just say really quickly to her, um, like just back up real quick, and then I'm gonna see if I could set my uh, my my TK flyer up a little bit, and fly around and kind of look around the area while I'm driving. Kind of do a perimeter search, or maybe around the building or something, just kind of a flyby, see if anything happens, if anything comes out because of that kind of testing the waters around absolutely um and since she's on top i don't want it to you know hit her and she doesn't know about it necessarily since it's clipped onto the top of the vehicle so i'm just asking her to absolutely um uh she just nods an acknowledgement as you kind of lean out and uh and uh tell her to to get clear for a minute um and she just effortlessly vaults her her body over uh the furthest kind of railing up at the top and disappears behind the vehicle for a moment. Um, as you uh, initiate the controls, uh, the flyer disengages from your vehicle 
and uh, quickly begins uh, ascending. You wanted to tell it to, I'm sorry, tell me the instructions one more time. A flyby the the structure, kind of just kind of like a kind of do like a little scan of the area just to like, just to, to see what's happening. Get okay. An aerial view. Okay. Um, and also slightly to test to see if like, since we know the drone went here, is something going to come out in defense of seeing something fly around? And if it does, I'd have it return to me as quickly as possible to not cause any harm or you okay. know, just disrupt anything. Um, you have it head forward at about 20 miles an hour, just so that it doesn't appear to be, you're trying Hostile to, yeah, you're trying to make it not look like a projectile or so, you know, anything like that. Um, as it moves in, uh, uh, within, um, you guys really aren't very far away. So as it, as it moves in, you guys are probably about I'll get eh, fairly wide a half mile it. away. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it moves in very quickly, and after it gains just a bit of altitude, you're able to get a pretty good view of the structure itself at the base camp, and that um, looks like a really, really simple, uh, almost like uh, like a fire watch uh, kind of station, um, only you know made of modern mega damage materials. It doesn't really look in any way the same kind of construction type of the tower itself um, and it seems to be set up more like something that the public is meant to use um, almost like the entrance to a you know national park or you know it's something of that of that type um, you do see uh, signs in several different languages um, a few of them you recognize uh, the signs simply say enter here and uh, denote uh, direction to the main doors at the front of the facility. Um, other than that, you're not really seeing anything like trash bins, um, any kind of, you know, benches, tables. There's nothing outside that makes it look like a tourist location. Um, it just simply looks like some kind of entrance and small, you know, uh, small kind of facility. And it is squarely tucked into the side of the mountain right there. Um, so it does look like it leads probably to the interior of the tower structure itself. Uh, other than that, you're not seeing any kind of defenses. Um, you don't see any outward signs of weaponry, troops, uh, or even uh, living sentience at all. Um, other than the different uh, you know, kind of bird calls and other animals that you can hear in the in the region, and the sound of uh, the water rushing uh, through the stream and and down the uh, different surfaces. Um, everything is just pretty serene. Um, it stops once it gets. You stop it once it gets. You know, within an eighth of a mile or so is not to appear too hostile. Um, as it looks over at the tower structure itself, you're still picking up roughly the same kinds of information. Uh, nothing really new presents itself other than at this closer distance, you're really still not able to see any kinds of weapon systems or you know openings on the tower structure. Um, other than that, that's all it really shows. A uh, comma, you wanted to be in you were riding in the uh, sand rail, right? Or the, the combat rail? Um, I'm in the rear where, like, okay. the gun is. Okay. Taking pictures. All right. Is That's, there any... That gun oh. has to fold out into, a like, a door gunner situation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about that. It's, 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 it's not out right now. I don't want it to be... But yeah, it, fo it folds into like a, it looks almost like a fucking, like a large toolbox in the back of the, the bed when it's enclosed and then it pops open and it comes out as a, like a seated, yeah. Armed, for for uh, this, let's go ahead and say that um, this trail that you're on is more than wide enough. In fact, it looks like, you know, even vehicles the size of the one that you arrived on are able to travel it. So there's plenty of, of space side to side and width 
uh, for that gunner seat to be extended and him to be able to, you know, you're not going well, to get, you're not going to get be in the back. He can be in the back without being in that gunner seat. That's just part of the, that. This opens up in the back. You can, that's like a back oh. of the truck almost. Oh, I, I just, get you. I think I think he was just riding him back just to take pictures. I don't think he's actually in the gunner seat. In the seat. Okay, okay, I get you. Um, yeah, so you're you're able to get plenty of pictures. You get really detailed shots of all of this stuff that you initially were after, Akama. Um, but you're also uh, able to get some close-ups of some of the uh, you know surrounding area as well as well as some of the the birds that are flying by now as you're snapping some shots of the birds go ahead and do a perception check real quick okay as you're snapping some shots of the birds, you guys are not on fire today. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to mix it up a little bit here before we get in some combat. Um, you're able to get some shots that are decent, but for some reason, every time you try and focus in on the birds, the shots come out blurry, and you can't. You're, you're just you're just not quite picking up exactly why. Um, there's some kind of phenomenon happening, but it's escaping you. Um, all right, you guys head forward. You cover the distance very, very quickly. Um, as you, I just wanted to ask too, is there any signs that we can see for or against mega damage animals? Like, uh, you said that there was no other, uh, signs of like stables or anything outside. So... Are they, is it okay that Wotek is going to be walking with us into this? I mean, does it seem wide enough, this entrance, to accommodate all of us? Um, you're actually not able to see it just yet. There's too much okay. kind of interceding. Um, but you do have that on that on your mind as you proceed forward. Um, you and Wotek both start picking up speed, and you guys are all... Um, essentially Wotek has moved over to the trail now and he's running up ahead of the rail uh, with Ren. Um, he's running up ahead by, you know, f like 50 yards. And as his massive mega damage frame, uh, again, what, what size is Wotek bear? What, uh, g give, five. give us one, sh like a quick description of him again. He is 5,000 pounds. He is 10 feet tall from claw to shoulder, so he's 20 feet tall when he rears up on his hind legs. He is covered in swirling masses of runes that kind of wisp and flow with uh, every time he walks that trace different patterns along his massive frame. Okay... You can show his uh, picture off if you want to. Yeah, all I have is his token picture. Let me see if I can... You should be able to pull him up underneath your mirror. Uh, he should be underneath there. His whole biography and everything. Yeah, I just don't want to have to pull everybody to another... Um... I'll work on this in the background as we're going. Um... Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Yeah, it's putting his token out. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, as you guys move forward, you see his massive claws digging into the kind of stones and gravel and dirt that make up the uh, path that you're traveling um, he seems as though he's trying to, to move quickly. Um, and Ren, as you look down at your speedometer, you realize he's doing about 30 miles an hour um, trying to very quickly get to your guys' destination. You guys are all getting from the sense of urgency being displayed by him that something is wrong and not just that he's in a mood to, to get somewhere quickly. Um, you can, can I, uh, good. Can I use my camera to zoom in, in the area since 
you seem like we're picking up speed and uh, feeling like it is a sense of urgency just to uh, look forward in our path and uh, maybe like the surrounding area of the path that we were going to to see if there's any issues or anything out of the ordinary um yeah as you're observing around you're honestly you just don't see anything um you're not really seeing a whole lot of um land-based animal life almost everything you're seeing that are obvious outward signs of of animal life close by are birds flying around but again there's some kind of blurry effect happening that you're not you're not familiar with um and as you're looking for signs of you know fox wolf bear anything like that um rabbit squirrel you you just aren't seeing anything around but i mean you're you're guessing that there has to be something like that as this seems like a complete ecosystem like it it's it, it really wouldn't make sense that there's birds but there's nothing living on the ground um you don't see any though uh as you guys travel further in um a comma give me one more perception check You guys are about a quarter of a mile from where the road turns up ahead and looks like it goes around a bend and will bring you to the front of uh, the building you're heading towards. Um, okay, you... this Something about this really is kind of tickling the back of your mind and you just you feel like something's definitely not right and so you turn back towards the birds um, as you get a little bit more clear view as you're a little closer but once again as you try and focus your camera no joy um, there is some kind of strange blurring effect that just seems to that seems to completely negate you being able to get real focus on these things um you are able to hear the sounds of their flight and everything though and so it makes you believe that it is almost definitely you know what you would probably consider like normal earth based you know native bird life flying around in in a few large kind of gatherings um flocks so as you guys continue forward um, you guys get to a, the very base of a, a long kind of wind around a kind of a, a bit of a cliff side that's gonna, you're gonna be driving around and out of view and then up at an angle and coming up to kind of the, the plateau that this building sits upon, um, and as you start making your way around that bend, uh, I need for you guys all to roll a perception check, please. Okay, um, as you guys are going around the corner, Akama, you're still kind of looking up in the air, trying to get a, a good view of the birds. Um, as you guys continue on, Ren and Ymir, you both look down and you're able to see uh ren you look down out of your window and you're going around to the left 
and as you glance down at the dirt down by your tires, uh, you notice that there is what appears to be a uh, a small, just some kind of small marmot, um, you'd, some kind of little weasel or something native to this area. Um, you're, you know, you're not that adept at zoology, but you, you, you're sure you've seen these kind of creatures many, many times. Um, this one in particular, even though you're driving by very quickly, uh, it seems unique in that it appears as though this creature is stuttering and jittering its way through the time stream. There is a great deal of distortion and almost almost like vibration that you're seeing in its image, uh, even though it appears to be not really moving forward or backwards. It almost looks as though it's very slowly uh, just experiencing some kind of temporal uh, shifting or schism or fracturing uh, that appears to make its form just horribly out of sync from what you would normally recognize. Um, you feel fortunate that you were able to catch it at just the right moment as it passed, or else you definitely would have missed the details about it. Um, Ymir, as you're running... Uh, directly behind Wotek, um, you actually come around the left-hand curve upward first, uh, up to where you're kind of to an open view. Your head is sticking up in an open view over uh, the platform uh, that you guys are going to wind up uh, going into the building on. Now, as you first come around that angle and are able to get a perspective where you're looking at this kind of broad, uh, uh, kind of mesa in front of you, uh, that butts right up against the, the kind of mountainside and this grand tower, uh, that now reaches up high into the sky above your head. Um, you see, laying on the ground what appears to be a deer uh, that is just a fondling. Um, as it's laying there close to where you're first able uh, to see, really close to the road itself, um, you notice a few different things. Um, you see that the deer is also experiencing exactly what I described uh, Ren saw. Um, that exact same kind of, of uh, schism pattern uh, is happening to this creature, and yet it seems you, you get the impression that this deer isn't dead. Um, you're slowing down as you pass it, and you're able to get a good look at it. It appears to you that this thing might even still be conscious from the kind of glare in its eye, and the wild pattern uh, that it appears to be moving in. Now, even though it seems uh, kind of out of sync with time, um, and think almost like a static effect or a fractured pane of glass effect over the deer itself, where different parts of it appear to be moving differently from each other in an independent fashion. The entire thing looks gruesome and completely chaotic in nature and must be excruciating. And you see that this deer appears to be uh, in the throes of this agony, um, almost just thrashing around on its side on the ground, okay? Um, you're not seeing the effect pass anywhere past the deer's form, though. It appears completely contained to the deer itself and doesn't look like it's spreading into the ground or into the air around it or anything like that. Um, you further see uh, now directly in front of you uh, is this small facility um, that you guys could see from a distance. It looks like it's made of mega damage, some kind of uh, stone, you would guess. Um, it's possible it's some kind of metal, but um, even to your trained eye, 
you're not really sure. It From a distance, it looked more like it was going to be, you know, standard, you know, wood and plaster construction, something, you know, some kind of mundane materials. Uh, but this is just a kind of uh, a fully opaque gray um, something. There's, there's a bit of a sheen, but it also has matte qualities as well. And you can tell that no light is being kind of reflected uh, off of it in any kind of glare. Um, so without some, you know, deeper investigation at this distance, you really can't tell what this building is made of. You do see that the front doors, however, with lots of signage above them uh, pointing uh, visitors to them in many languages, including um, a couple that you recognize, um, you see that there are uh, doors large enough for someone uh, quite a bit larger than you even uh, to fit through. Um, Wotek and you should have no problems whatsoever. And as you look down at the ground, uh, as Wotek uh, becomes uh, kind of aimed towards the doors um, and really starts picking up speed, um, you, you've slowed down a step or two, but he seems to be rushing towards the doors. Um, you notice that the tracks leading up to the doors include um, a few that you're able to recognize as some larger kind of like animals um, and what you would guess are like exotic mounts. Um, okay. This makes you feel like you're probably going to be there's probably going to be some kind of option. The doors themselves do not seem barred in any way. In fact, they seem to be on large uh, hinges um, because as Wotek uh, continues rushing forward, he simply slows his step about halfway, um, puts a shoulder down, leans his head to the side and kind of at a pretty quick pace just kind of like pushes them open um they swing open like batwing doors although they don't return on their own um they slowly kind of open after he stopped pushing pressure uh putting pressure on them um and continue just opening slowly on their own um he begins okay, I, oh. he begins slipping inside as your companions catch up and come over the crest of that ridge and Ymir you're standing there now looking around it's it's essentially just a five uh, uh, I'm sorry this this area that you're standing on is essentially like a 50 foot wide just kind of like flat uh, hard pack of dirt and rock um, and the only feature on it is the kind of cliff face in front of you leading up to the tower and the the face of the building, which the doors are about, I'm going to say the doors are about 15 feet tall and about 10 feet wide. So it's a huge, you know, opening to this facility. Um, and the doors are just opening wide enough to where you're going to be able to see inside in just a, a second here. Um, your companions catch up and Ymir, what would you like to do is you're still, you're about, you're only about, we're going to say 30 feet from the opening doors. You're, you're right behind Wotek. Um, okay. yeah, I just want to defile away and uh, say that Ymir, after seeing the fawn and what it went through, uh, there is a certain part of his psyche now that he was just sort of in survival mode again just kind of moving forward but now he is angry because it's the suffering of a young animal and that hits him somewhere deep in his psyche attached to a story that he told Wotek uh, that him and his brother both there so the, the sight of that fawn even though it was just in passing it, it still is leaving sort of a, a cold mental scar. You can't see it on his face, but it's definitely um, the suffering of that animal and the vision of seeing what that um, fawn was going through uh, is heavy on his mind right now. Excellent. All right. Um, and 
as you see this, you move forward with a kind of gnash of your teeth and uh, a kind of grimace um, as this washes over you. And you, you, you definitely are getting the sense that this is something very um, unnatural. Uh, and mm-hmm. that always puts a bitter taste in your mouth. So as you move forward, um, as I said, your companions are following up behind um, Ymir. As you're watching, the doors are opening to what you would only describe as basically darkness. Um, you're not really seeing anything immediately. Um, Ren and Akama, um, as the rail pulls over the lip of the of the mesa, you guys look around and are picking up that same kind of um, kind of scope of everything about 50 feet across and 50 feet deep with the cliff face in front of you and the doors uh, to the facility standing uh, kind of open and slowly opening in front of you. Um, you both are able to look over and see the deer in clear detail. It's off on the left-hand side. Um, and you both see that exact same uh, image. Um, you look around and uh, nothing else really catches your eye. Um, as you guys are moving forward, uh, just a bit behind Ymir, is there anything any of, er, that either of you want to do really quick? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Akama, you're set? I'm good. Okay. Are you still taking pictures? Uh, no. Okay. You've put that away and you're kind of, you know, ready for whatever's coming. Um, you guys move forward and as you start uh, heading into the cover of this building, um, all of you start realizing that this is more of like a tunnel not necessarily a like a barracks or anything um as you continue on uh the light from the outside world slowly starts fading away and as it does so uh you guys here Uh, you guys hear a strange kind of crackling coming from up ahead of you. Um, the crackling has a sort of electric kind of cadence to it. Um, and you notice that here in the dark, uh, you are you're hearing an audible almost like echoing sensation but it's more than some kind of um it's more than just your footfalls and the noise of an electric engine um and tires crunching over a still uh what sounds like solid surface um now that you've moved past the doors you guys definitely uh can tell that the ground that you're walking on is essentially the same type of material that made up the outer walls um but now just as a smooth surface uh as a floor um with just a tiny bit of texture like gravel or dirt would have um it now gives the entire uh kind of tunnel that you're in this sort of almost like a coffin-like strangeness, a a kind of otherworldly, like you're heading into another state of being kind of of, uh, flavor. So as you guys slowly walk through and ride through, um, everybody has slowed down quite a bit. Apparently, Wotek is now feeling much more comfortable that whatever was alarming him has passed enough and he should be... Uh, you know, he, apparently he feels at ease now. Um, you guys are moving forward at about five miles an hour. Um, you continue on for what seems further than you should uh, to be 
at anything that would, you know, be at the outside of that tower base down at this depth. Um, as you continue on, you continue hearing that strange electrical noise, um, that little surge and arcing of electricity, it sounds like. Um, very quickly, you start seeing flashes of blue up ahead. Um, just small little arcs of blue illuminating like lightning in the distance. Um, it takes you another several moments to get close enough uh, but there, far off, thrashing violently back and forth, uh, is the image of this individual. Now, as you guys continue to approach, uh, this image flickers uh, in and out of your eyesight as random arcs of energy appear um, to surge not just above but through his head. Um, you would guess that it's a male. Um, you hear intense, loud, gibbering noises coming from this individual every time the machine arcs. And then every time the machine stops, it, it only arcs for about a half a second and then it will go out for anywhere between a second to four or five seconds. It seems fairly random. Um, but as it's kind of firing through him, you hear just a gibbering and inco incoherent, just kind of, you know, strange, just, uh, just mumblings um, and jabberings. And then when uh, the darkness comes again, uh, and he goes out of view, for those of you without night vision, um, you can hear just deep, raspy breaths, as well as what appears to be almost like some kind of, um, almost like some kind of prayer in a very, very low, uh, exhausted, strange, uh, voice. Um, hearing this prayer you would guess it to be. It's in some language you don't necessarily recognize. It sounds a bit familiar to each of you, but none of you can actually discern the words. Hearing this prayer started and stopped repetitively as you continue approaching, almost in a desperate kind of trying to, to shield oneself from the darkness they know awaits them in just another second or two, um, a desperate plea with one's maker uh, to protect them from a hell that they find themselves in. Um, it robs each of you of just a bit of steel in your, in your spine. Um, and knowing that whatever is happening to this creature appears to be fairly permanent um, really strikes each one of you in your core. Um, none of you are what one would generally call uh, just simply opportunists or, um, you know, necessarily selfish individuals. And each one of you does have a moral code. Um, and seeing some creature, some humanoid, some sentient, being enslaved in this way or tortured this way or... Um, bound in this way, each one of you is definitely affected by this, and none of you like it. Um, in you fact, said this is an image though, not it's not actually there. It's just an image of. No, something? no, no. You you're seeing this individual in whatever this harness is. Okay. Um, you said an image at first. I thought so. I thought you meant it was maybe like a. No. Yeah. It appears. It appears that it's it's in this uh, contraption, uh, dead center of the kind of tunnel ahead of you. Um, about, we're going to say about a hundred feet up ahead. Um, your group is all now clustered together fairly closely. Um, in fact, if you'd like, you can kick on your headlights and, and illuminate the area. Um, you're pretty confident they'd basically, you know, light the entire thing up if you wish. Um, 
Yeah, if I'm supposed to be seeing something on the black screen because of my night vision, I'm not seeing anything. It's just no, a black no, you're square. not. You're not. Okay, okay, just making sure. Um, Absolutely. yeah, I'll, I'll, I will, I will. Before I do that, I will give a quick uh, question. I will, I will ask my companions if they feel that that would be an okay thing for me to do, or if they're uncomfortable with me doing it. Your beard nods his head in agreement. Akama? Akama? Yeah. Did you... Uh, do you want him to kick on the headlights, or...? Uh, it's, it don't matter to me. Okay. okay. I'll kick him on. Driving. Okay. Well, so, I, I know that was what I was asking. So as you kick him on, you're able to see that... Um, that individual is standing in what looks like um, a maybe a like a 50 foot wide square room and this tunnel that's leading forward it basically expands out into that room and you're now able to see that tracks on the floor um, seem to go to the left and to the right of that individual and then disappear basically level with his position in the center of the room. Am I supposed to have an image? Because I only have black. Uh, no, just I'm... You, this okay, is really all... Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Fine. That's, fine. yeah this that's totally fine. So, yeah. as you guys look around this room, um, you see that... The far wall, which again is about 50 feet um, uh, from the opening, uh, is just solid. There doesn't appear to be any doors, any other uh, exits whatsoever from this tunnel. Um, it just kind of stops at this room, and again, all tracks stop level with this guy, who is about... He's about... Yeah, he's in the dead center of the room, so he's 25 feet from the rear wall. Um, and 25 feet from the entrance to the room. Um, you guys are all basically getting 